nuclear energy. A few things usually pop into people's heads when they hear those words. Maybe you think of radiation, possibly the Chernobyl incident in 1986. A lot of people immediately think of the atom bomb. But do you think about how nuclear energy is clean energy? I didn't think so. The most popular examples of clean energy in recent years have been wind power or solar power. You've most likely driven by solar panels or windmills, which are great cost-effective clean energy resources. But what happens when there's a cloudy day and the solar panels don't get as much direct sunlight? Or a day with still winds, not very profitable with windmills. The common go-tos for clean energy aren't as reliable and thought out as one might consider. Nuclear energy production is used in the United States, but has been recently slowed down for numerous reasons. According to Dan Kamen, the professor of energy at UC Berkeley, by 2050, all nuclear plants in operation will be replaced. Even though that's the projected goal of shutdown, the efforts have been slowed down, but the government and science community have noticed a trend in the financial burden it takes to create and run nuclear plants. The plans to demolish these plants are despite the great progress and future in nuclear fusion. But what is nuclear energy, and why is it the future of clean energy? Stay tuned for the rest of the video to find out. To start off, what is nuclear energy? The IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, defines it as a form of energy released from the nucleus, the core of the atom, made up of protons and neutrons. And there are two separate ways to produce nuclear energy, fusion and fission. Well, that leads to another big question. What is nuclear fusion and nuclear fission? The IAEA puts that simply as well. Fission, when nuclei of atoms split into several parts, or fusion, when nuclei fuse together. These basic fundamentals are the building blocks to what we're about to dive into. In the greater scheme of things, nuclear energy is a lot more involved than you think it is. 10% of global energy production is nuclear, according to a study in 2019. 29% globally of low carbon power is nuclear and 55% of just the United States low carbon power is also nuclear. These statistics are insane. It shows us how much of our energy is already nuclear based. Now, like we've talked about before, the word nuclear has a lot of connotations. And because of that negative connotation, it has affected the building and expansion of nuclear power plants. People have been afraid of the effects of radiation around the plant workers and the community surrounding the plant. This dates back to some incidents, such as Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania, where a leakage of radiation happened on March 28, 1979, when a reactor became faulty, leading to harm of people in the plant and the overall town. Then, once entering the 80s, there were multiple global phenomenons with nuclear issues, but most notable was Chernobyl in 1986. In Chernobyl, there was an explosion in one of the plants, which killed two workers and 28 after with the effects of radiation. Chernobyl is known because it is speculated that the radiation from the explosion had caused different cancers within the community, which had become so bad that they had to create other facilities to help with the treatment. As these examples show, there is some serious concern when building nuclear plants, because if there are any types of accidents, it could end up being catastrophic, and not just for the workers, but for the community that surrounds it. After the incidents listed, people would protest for the shutdown of nuclear plants, and suggest going in a different direction for clean energy preservation. Because how could something be clean if it had such a harmful reaction? Despite these nuclear issues being spread throughout the years, back in 1953, Eisenhower had the idea to negate the negativity for nuclear energy and create the Atoms for Peace program, which helped the United States to build two times the amount of nuclear plants by 1991 than any other country. However, like what was discussed before, the incidents that were happening sporadically were so detrimental that it negated the progress these nuclear plants for the Atoms of Peace program tried so hard to push for. In the Atoms for Peace program, the topics of fusion and fission were both brought up, because these are the only known methods of creating nuclear energy. Which leads us to the next segment. How does nuclear fusion and fission work? Nuclear fission was discovered by German scientists in 1938. The process is simply described as they blast uranium with neutrons. The nucleus splits, forming two isotopes, with less mass, and then the releasing mass gets converted into energy. This process ended up paving the way for the atomic bomb. Nuclear fusion was discovered in the United Kingdom around 1946. 
The easiest way to explain it is by saying, with extreme temperatures and intense pressure, it causes hydrogen atoms to slam together, forming helium atoms. The mass it loses is converted into energy. An easy way to remember the difference between fusion and fission is that fusion gains, fuses, and fission loses, fizzles. One of them has two combining, the other is separating. Now that there is a basic understanding of all the fundamentals of nuclear energy, let's move on to why we need it. If you've learned something interesting about nuclear energy at this point in the video, please take a minute to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more interesting, educational content. Okay, back to the video. What are the positives to having nuclear energy? As spoken about previously, there have been some obvious problems with nuclear plants, with compelling and valid reasons as to why they shouldn't be pursued as an option for clean energy. To be specific, clean energy is renewable energy, which is energy used from resources that can naturally replenish themselves. Nuclear energy is an example of renewable energy, and as cost-efficient wind and solar power are, nuclear energy is more stable because of its consistency. The most important and valuable part of nuclear energy is that it is emissions-free. Nuclear reactors generate no greenhouse gases. Energy.gov published, it generates nearly 800 billion kilowatt hours of electricity each year and produces more than half of the nation's emissions-free electricity. This avoids more than 470 million metric tons of carbon each year, which is the equivalent of removing 100 million cars off the road. That means nuclear energy would help out with one of the most important issues we face globally, climate change. Because of nuclear power being the second largest source of low carbon energy, first being hydropower, it has already reduced carbon emissions on an insane level. According to the IEA, the use of nuclear power has reduced carbon dioxide emissions by more than 60 gigatons over the past 50 years, which is almost two years worth of global energy-related emissions. If this type of energy is already making the world a healthier place, it seems to be valid as to still have an option for clean energy. Another reason as to why nuclear energy is a great choice is because it creates jobs for the community. In the United States alone, the nuclear industry holds around half a million jobs. According to the NEI, each nuclear plant alone holds around 500 to 800 workers. Getting rid of these nuclear plants is putting hundreds of people out of a job, which affects the overall economy. For just the construction of a nuclear power plant, it takes around 7,000 workers at the height of building. Without the creation of more nuclear energy plants, less and less people are going to be employed. A final and unexpected reason as to why creating more nuclear energy plants is a good thing is that it supports national security. How does nuclear energy have anything to do with national security? Remember the discussion about Eisenhower's Atoms for Peace program? Well, that was to promote positive connotation with nuclear power globally. The United States, as well as many other countries, want to continue with peaceful and positive uses for nuclear energy. Energy diplomacy is a sector that the United States cares deeply about and wants to promote and build relations with other countries. Building these relationships could help create and learn about new technologies that would benefit the progression of nuclear fission and or nuclear fusion. To wrap things up, a lot of scientific discoveries have used years and years of trial and error, and nuclear energy is one of those. Nuclear does have a negative connotation, sadly for the destruction it has caused accidentally and purposefully. But the image of nuclear is changing into a positive one, and it would benefit all of us globally to get on board. There are many privatized companies trying to create safer and more technologically advanced reactors. People like Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates are throwing huge amounts of monies into these companies for research and product accessibility. The advancement of nuclear energy is happening right in front of our eyes and the company General Fusion is bringing a commercial reactor sometime in the 2030s, or in French, they're creating the largest and most powerful reactor by the company ITER. As technology progresses, we must progress with it. As you think about nuclear energy towards the end of the video, comment down below if you think the risks outweigh the pros. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content.